A very dangerous storm is about to impact the United States, and this will bring significant severe weather today and tomorrow. This includes the risk of numerous damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now, things look pretty quiet. We don't really have a whole lot in the way of severe weather. We actually had some storms, though, fire off from Kansas back into southern Wisconsin. Wisconsin late last night, but over the next several hours, we are anticipating a ton of storms to fire off across areas like Texas and Oklahoma, all the way through the Mississippi River Valley, and this corridor is where we're anticipating severe storms to fire up by as early as 10 to 11 o'clock this morning, and this will roll all the way through the afternoon and evening hours today. This will also impact areas across the Ohio Valley all the way through the Northeast. This is going to be a major storm system over the next 48 hours that could cause some big problems. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Saturday and the Storm Prediction Center has a huge slight risk of severe weather in place. This includes most of the mid and lower Mississippi Valley all the way back into Texas and Oklahoma where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table today. We also have a marginal threat that goes from southern Michigan all the way back into the Gulf Coast including the Florida Panhandle. The biggest concern for today will be damaging winds. I would not be surprised if the Storm Prediction Center were to upgrade at least parts of our on even eastern Oklahoma to an enhanced risk of severe weather. If this were to happen, it would be driven most likely by wind. There is a low chance even it could be driven by tornadoes as well. There is a threat for some large hail. This will be primarily during the late morning and early afternoon with our initial storms that fire off. If there are any prefrontal supercells basically ahead of a squall line that's going to form later today, I wouldn't rule out some hail up to the size of golf balls, maybe two inches in diameter. But for the majority of the storms that do produce hail, it won't be much larger than the size of corn. Now, our tornado risk is massive. This is one of the biggest tornado risks that we've had in quite some time when it comes to square mileage that is covered. With that said, this is not a super high risk. However, there will likely be at least a few tornadoes today. We do have a 5% tornado risk that includes many areas in the mid-Mississippi Valley, including the Ozarks. Basically, all of Arkansas is included in this risk, including northern Louisiana and almost all of central Mississippi. We also have a marginal threat, which is our 2% tornado risk that goes from extreme southern Michigan all the way back into the Florida Panhandle. This does include most of Indiana as well, where a few tornadoes are possible. This will be primarily this afternoon into the early evening hours. So today is a very important day to make sure that you are staying weather aware, have multiple ways to receive warnings. There is a possibility that we go live covering this severe weather event later today on this channel, especially if we end up seeing tornado warnings. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. Now, Sunday is a bit of a different story. We're not talking about nearly as significant of a day of severe weather despite our low pressure system intensifying over the Great Lakes. I don't expect storms to be very tall in these regions, which basically means that it's going to be troubling for these to actually produce any sort of legit tornado risk. But we do have a marginal threat of severe weather for most of the Ohio Valley and the Northeast, with the main concern being damaging winds and maybe a weak tornado or two. There's also a marginal threat along the Gulf Coast where there's actually a 2% tornado risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. The the main threat, though, here will still be damaging winds. Perhaps a tornado or two, though, near Panama City or just outside of that near Mobile are a possibility. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather, beginning with what is happening today across the Ohio Valley and the mid-Mississippi Valley. So by about 10 to 11 o'clock, storms will already be firing up from the Red River Valley of Texas and Oklahoma all the way through St. Louis. These will be mainly producing isolated wind and hail. The tornado risk around 10 to 11 o'clock this morning will stay low. By lunchtime and as we go into the early afternoon, afternoon, a line of thunderstorms will begin to form. This is going to be very disorganized, but this is basically the area where we're mo mostly going to be talking about a damaging wind threat. I would not rule out an isolated brief tornado somewhere in this area. However, it is not very likely that these storms will be producing much of a tornado risk. What gets a little bit more concerning is if we see storms fire up out in front of this line of thunderstorms. This is not a guarantee. However, this particular model here is indicating that we could see a few prefrontal supercells that fire up right around one two three o'clock, maybe one over here in southwestern Arkansas, perhaps even another one back up in Illinois or Indiana. If this were to happen, the threat of tornadoes and even a strong tornado would be a lot more elevated. With that said, this could easily turn into a very messy setup where a bunch of supercells are on top of each other. If that ends up happening, it's going to be hard for one of these storms to actually squeeze out a tornado. Now, with all that said, I do think that there is a legit chance today for tornadoes, but it's going to be a kind of a boomer bust kind of day. We're either going to see a bunch of tornadoes or we'll see very 
few to zero. So that's kind of the day that we're expecting right now. By about four o'clock, notice how that line of thunderstorms continues to push across Arkansas with the main concern being damaging winds and a couple of embedded tornadoes. But look at this back down here in southwest Arkansas and northeastern Texas. This is where those prefrontal supercells will eventually merge into that line of thunderstorms, reducing the overall significance of a tornado threat. While all that's happening, we still will have supercells in all sorts of storms ongoing in southeastern Missouri and southern Illinois. The majority of these will still be wind producers with a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. By about 5 to 6 o'clock, I could also see there being one rogue supercell that fires out in front of the line in southern Illinois. Line of thunderstorms continues to push through central and eastern Arkansas with damaging winds between 60 to 75 miles per hour continuing. And then by 8 to 9 o'clock tonight, the majority of the severe weather will be winding down. It'll be a very weak line of thunderstorms moving through central Tennessee and Kentucky overnight tonight and then into tomorrow morning. This will be pushing into the Ohio Valley and eventually going into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast with a continuation of severe weather. And then across the lower Mississippi Valley in the southeast, there will be a few prefrontal storms that attempt to fire off across central and northern Louisiana this afternoon. This picture here is four o'clock. Generally speaking, the biggest concern will be wind and hail, maybe an isolated tornado or two. And then by seven to eight o'clock, this line of thunderstorms will continue to push through Mississippi and also central Louisiana with mainly a damaging wind threat. A couple of QLCS tornadoes, which means the tornadoes embedded in a line of thunderstorms, will continue to be a threat through about midnight or so. And then as we go into the overnight hours, this is a pretty messy line of thunderstorms. And then Sunday morning, that is when we're watching for a low-end tornado risk right along the Gulf Coast. I could see there being an isolated tornado, but I think more than anything, these are mostly going to be storms that are rotating offshore, which means water spouts would be generally the greatest concern. One of those storms, though, might get close enough to the coast where one of them might try to push inland and produce a brief tornado. So something to watch out for. But almost all of central and southern Florida really will not be dealing with much in the way of storms Sunday afternoon and evening, despite there being an entire cluster of storms during the morning in the panhandle. Now back over in the northeast, the threat of severe weather doesn't really exist today, but tomorrow we are anticipating a line of storms to fire up right across western New York, Ohio, and even parts of Pennsylvania. This will be producing mainly a damaging wind threat during the middle and end of the afternoon hours. During the early evening, this line will continue to push across central and eastern Pennsylvania. Generally speaking, again, I'm not expecting much in the way of tornadoes here, but damaging wind gusts up to 60 to 65 miles per hour will be a possibility, which could knock down some trees and power lines, so just stay aware of that. Monday morning, this cluster of storms will continue to push through southern and central New England. This may lead to some isolated severe weather during the morning, maybe a very low-end threat of a brief water spout or funnel cloud back over in southern New England, but outside of that, I'm not expecting much in the way of severe weather in New England. Now, another thing I do want to point out with this big storm system is that we are anticipating pretty high winds throughout most of today and tomorrow across the northeast, the Ohio Valley, and even back on the west side of the slow pressure system where there will be cooler air across the Midwest. Wind gusts upwards of 40 to 60 miles per hour is a possibility today and tomorrow. Monday and Tuesday are not going to be very different, by the way. We got another intense low pressure system that'll be right over the far northern plains and the upper Midwest. This will also bring some pretty high winds Monday and Tuesday across many areas in the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the northern plains. A little bit of snow is possible as well across North Dakota Monday night into early Tuesday, but any sort of accumulating snowfall appears unlikely at this time. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week look to be pretty quiet, and then our next big storm, which may produce severe weather, I am eyeing currently for sometime around Thursday or Friday, perhaps in the central or southern plains. So generally speaking, right now over the next two to three days will be the most impactful weather that we see probably for the next five or six days. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. A live stream is likely later today for severe weather coverage, so make sure to click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. Before we go live, make sure to check out our 24-7 weather camera live stream. This has a bunch of cameras inside of our risk area of severe weather today, so definitely go ahead and check this out. It's on the More Max Velocity channel. It's also the top link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to that channel while you're over there as well. We got a lot more stuff coming over there. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you guys all again in the next forecast or live stream.